Good evening. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the University of the Applied Art. Uh, I first have to announce that we... We have to announce that from fall of this year on, uh, this school will have a master program. Um, if you want uh, to have more detailed information, look at our website, please. <laughs> uh, I just uh, came from a meeting with our Herrn Bundespräsident, with the President of Austria, where a lot of artists are writing now and articulating a communique for liberating Ai Weiwei in China. And I would, I would propose that our school uh, would do a communique as well. We did it. We did it. Uh, very good. We were the first to make a press release. When? <laughs> okay. Saha, Saha. Ich habe gerade uh, oh, sorry. I, I, I recently saw two very impressive buildings of Saha's office. The one is uh, the Maxi, the Museum of Modern Art in Rome, and the other one is the Opera Building in Guangzhou in China. I think that the Maxi the, is not a museum for modern art. It's rather a kind of museum for liquid space. And the auditorium in the Guangzhou Opera Building is a space where I think all of us would be able to hear the color of architecture. Not only the sound of the music, but also the color of architecture you would be able to hear there. These two buildings are for sure uh, intelligent poles in the, in the desert of simplicity of our world. And I think they are opponents against super, superficial way of thinking. In the last 20 years, I think, architecture was a promise and I have to thank Saha to keep this promise up with every of her building. Saha, thank you very much. I've been teaching here for 10 years, and there's my first lecture. <laughs> and, but um, I want to thank Wolf, not only for his introduction, but for convincing me that many years ago to, to come here, and uh, for Gerald Bass for making it happen. But thank you, uh, Wolf. No, really. Um, I won't tell my history with Vienna. I have a long history with Vienna from the age of, I don't know, seven maybe. I didn't like it when I was young. <laughs> I came when I was, I was 15 years old, spent the whole summer with my family and it was deadly. So, but anyway, uh, I've come here now for over, since I finished at the A, I think since the mid uh, 80s, very frequently. And because of my connection with Wolf coming to his reviews and also uh, to his events and, uh, and also because of Peter Nova and the events of the MAC. Um, so I've had a longer relationship here. Uh, I will try to talk tonight about some of the recent work which is finished 
or just com some of the community are on site. I cannot show all the work in the office, but um, as you will know, I teach at the, at, uh, at the anger mentor, and uh, I think, and I really am not doing propaganda here. Some of the work in the school here is one of the best, some of the best work I've seen anywhere, and, and I think uh, because there's continuity, and I, and I think that because there was, you know, we all have tremendous amount of people who are great assistants, not only assistants, but great teachers. And I think it's a very, it's a very kind of uh, privileged school in that way. And, um, and I, I, I really think for me it's been a tremendous experience in terms of the product of the work. Because when I teach in America, it's like for three months or four months or even a year, you don't have the same impact you have or the work has when you have continuity. There's a very old drawing I did in 1983-84. Actually, it was the year I met you a few months later. Uh, I remember very well in London they came to give a lecture, but I had to go to Ireland to give a to give a talk myself. And we didn't really meet, so we met when I came back. I used to live in a very small news house. But we met many before, years before that when I came to Vienna with my unit trip. Now, they used to do these unit trips which, uh, to um, various cities. And uh, I came to Vienna in 76. Many of you were not even born, and um, you know, your grandparents were born then, maybe. Uh, but anyway, uh, but it was, I remember sitting under your palm tree in that round room in your old office, and anyway, and um, it was very interesting, and I think that even then, I think the work of Hans Hollein uh, had, again, tremendous, uh, there were very few heroes at the time who one could relate to as a student. And I think it was very important that these people, I mean, I came to the AA where I studied in the early 70s, post-68, so I was not, did not know all that work which went on in the summer school uh, at the AA. I just learned about it later. This is a drawing which you did in 83 after I won the peak, which I think, uh, in a way, for me, is a very seminal project uh, and interesting. And, and I think a lot of the methods which, um, let's say, were, were graphic methods, and maybe, to start with, or ideas and methods, but became really the way to kind of really develop projects. This is a catalog of, at the time, of the, the work we were on show, and uh, they were kind of uh, scattered around the globe. But I think what is interesting, it was even then, the idea of being interested in the in topography, let's say, and landscape and geometry uh, kind of occurred. And uh, I can't, maybe Patrick can point them. Um, I also have to thank Patrick, I'm sorry I missed your talk yesterday. I heard it was very animated. And it's a real shame we did not do a marathon. Uh, next year, that would be definitely the case. Uh, Patrick and a few other colleagues will do an all night and all day marathon which was done at the, in London at the Serpentine, and I think it could be rather fun for Vienna, and um, except nobody can smoke, uh, which would be a problem for the Viennese students. Um, but anyway, uh, I want to thank him. I didn't meet him in those years. I met Patrick in 88, uh, when we did the Decon show ourselves in New York, which was, I think, I think also very important uh, moment and date, and has been a tremendous contributor to the office uh, and, uh, and a, a very close friend and ally to me, and uh, I want to thank you, Patrick. That doesn't say that we have our problems and um, differences. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it makes it into uh, what he thinks is an interesting uh, discourse, uh, but um, I have my Anyway, can you go back? Like, where, where, where are you going? <laughs> uh, you have to watch. Whenever I tease Patrick, the things move on faster. That was really also, um, we had the Mac show, I think it's now maybe eight years ago. Uh, yeah, which was a great, I mean, also a tremendous opportunity 
and uh, with, with, a, with a major installation, ice stone or something. We went through all the ice uh, features, uh, but it was a, which also collected all the paintings and drawings in one room. It was more like an archival show with a, with a very big installation in the main space. And it really took a tremendous chutzpah on, of, on part of Peter Nova to actually do the show. Uh, and I, I think it's also, I want to thank him. Uh, he has been also a tremendous friend and support uh, to me. And I would say again, it's one of the reasons I came to Vienna was that people like Wolf and him and Hans because, you know, I didn't know too many people at the time. And they kind of urbanized the city by activity and by work. And I think it's very important uh, that uh, things like that are, um, do not uh, immerse into the, uh, the provinces again. So that was really the beginning what I would call sort of fluidity in terms of the work. So it was an ice flow where the entire, and the call also came at the same time. This project actually was worked, some of it worked on by uh, an ex-student of mine from the Venice of uh, Thomas Witzker, who was uh, also a great designer who was in my office. I have to say that um, I think there's, the people who have come from the school are uh, you know, really very well placed in the office in London and have also been incredible uh, contributions. So this also came at the same time as the idea of fabrication and being able to kind of really construct a whole domain uh, in, one, in one large installation. Next. Uh, a catalog of all the things which I will show today. Rome. I don't know what the other things are, but <laughs> sorry, sideways. Uh, Baku, the bridge, uh, Glasgow, Chanel, um, and uh, the tower in Marseille, and the uh, Opera House, and the pool. I know this, this, you have to invest, invent the school in a, a screen. Redecoration. <laughs> Maybe the next professor would insist on having his office in this room. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my office on the roof. <laughs> I didn't really bargain too well when I came here. I had a decorator in my, my studio, but I wanted to have a penthouse that didn't work. I had many ideas. One was a penthouse on the top as an office. One was to inhabit Peter Nova's platform and make it into a house. But, you know, it didn't work. Next. I don't have to repeat it because they, they can read the text, which I cannot see from here. And bundles and, and some things. Oh. Maybe better you can read it from here. No, I can see that's given to topography. So these are some of these. Uh, I wouldn't need a hospital after this because my neck would be kind of out of joint. Um, some of these kind of projects which were last came into property, like the, well, maybe some things which we don't know here, like uh, the Qatar Museum, the Museum in Graz, uh, Rome, uh, other kind of installations, the, for example, the Science Museum in Wolfsburg. This is a project for the Royal Collection and the, a diagram for the Quebec Library in uh, Canada. And some early diagrams of the Islamic Museum in Qatar which uh, but I think what is interesting is some of these sketches or uh, studies, it took maybe um, a few takes to understand how to translate, let's say, a field of striations uh, and, and how they are clashing into each other or flow over each other. Uh, the, the kind of body as a separated volumes and then as in the Reign of Sophia, how that could become gallery spaces. The uh, citadel, uh, as a project for a museum um, in Qatar, where it starts, where I used to do kind of painting with gradation, so how to gradate space from very small spaces to very large spaces, then translation of the topography landscape in terms of 
the, um, the library as a as a kind of an, a tree of knowledge and how these are in, in a way valleys which are the reading rooms with crevices in between become the the root of enlightenment in a sense so the roots of the staircases are between these crevices and these kind of ideas really emerge uh, later on in the built work and there's a kind of crevices between these volumes or the idea of a very large volume encompassing many different programs almost a city on its own in one continuous volume a space underground you missed it it's okay uh, the um, Marina Sofia, which is uh, which, uh, no, the royal collection, which was only exhibiting in Spain uh, kind of carriages and, and rugs. But the idea that you can really stick out uh, like a teaser, like a tongue, out of the ground to bring you in into the cave below. And it's uh, the idea of carving also emerged in this project, not only in the way you carve the earth to prepare it for a, for a program, but the method of way we did all the models, where it was like strata, where it's cut, uh, you know, I think that some of the people in the office, uh, like, is it from uh, like uh, Eddie, who is now in Korea, working on a project there, uh, had to cut uh, this thick plastic by hand, um, um, like uh, for you know, a month. And um, these are really also, what I'm saying is that these kind of graphic explorations were, became the project, and that's why I think it's, it's very kind of exciting uh, for me. So they would emerge again somewhere, somehow, in a built, in a built form. Thanks, Lisa. Um, uh, the Salerno Ferry Terminal is on site, the stations in Innsbruck. Uh, the poor library, whatever the end ones are, they're so distorted I can't even, although I'm the queen of distortion, but I can't tell what they are. Again, I think even the middle project, which was a uh, Guadalajara, it served away Guadalajara. Um, there was a very, I mean, the only funny thing about the Guadalajara experience that um, when we went there, the client had to get the biggest ever uh, flag on Earth, matching that of the Americans when landed on some planet. And, um, and this poor soldier who was unraveling this um, flag got caught in it and was lifted off the ground inside the flag. Uh, this is not like the Alibaba and the flying carpet, with some sort of un unflying carpet. Um, anyway, uh, this is the museum, the library here in uh, Vienna. So this idea of the clusters will also come to fields. All the, from very early drawing to the right, to the close to me here of the penthouse studies of London, so looking at all the London rooftops, to the field of the graphics on the car park over Strasbourg, uh, to the, all the master plans uh, in uh, different cities from, from Bilbao to Beijing to Singapore, um, Istanbul. <coughs> the field of Exhibition in Padua. Okay, well, Rome. So I think I start with the with the peak. Maybe the image is from the peak where there are these. Uh, a series of beams with, which uh, rest over each other and they leave between them a space which is a, a public domain. Uh, so the story of the kind of really uh, how you either, uh, you can always make a space of carved space, carved into, in this case, carved into the rock to replace it by these new uh, by this new uh, program. 
how you can actually also um, maybe critique the program, which was a, a club. And if you say that, you know, I want to make all the project into the buildings into one. Um, and the idea of the space of suspension, where the whole of void is like these buildings are suspended within, as if almost like plants of their own. But also the adjacency between the library and the time inside the space to the swimming pool, to the motorway, this kind of closeness of different, very different, diverse uh, entities uh, being together. Studies of the Mitra fire station, that it kind of forms a void, again, a car in the factory domain. And with that, also trying, looking at these kind of volumes which intercept or dissect each other, um, by getting the space or coming, bringing it back together, achieving lightness through a material like concrete, um, learning from the pennies how to light uh, a building, also how to achieve transparency within the building that you can see one, one space to the next and through this kind of, uh, let's say, technique or uh, use of space, space. An early drawing of the Hamburg project we also, me and Wolf used to bump into each other in the various airports um, around the world uh, after we met in a news house in London. And one of them was in Hamburg. Don't worry, I won't tell the whole story. <laughs> and it was interesting. I went back to Hamburg later a few times and we were commissioned to this project of um, two projects. And uh, one was just kind of a very mini slab I call them slab beds, they were so small. And there was, again, a series of them. Uh, this one, the Kudam project in Berlin, two project in Japan, and the cluster of slabs, uh, making them like fingers, which is the precursor for the Nusselt project. Uh, and um, so anyway, looking back at, again, topography, as in the Van Amran project, which is the other side of Vitra. So it's Vitra's sister, but it's not also maybe three volumes, but it starts at zero and becomes like a gentle a hill. This is a show of, uh, a show of uh, something, a landscape, a flower, flower exhibition. At the time, I wasn't very interested in, uh, so much interested in nature. I was interested in landscape, but I wasn't interested in flowers or plants. <coughs> uh, the field where the study for the Qatar Museum, so this is one of many, many studies about these colliding volumes or of, of a series of, uh, in this case, uh, striated, but really at the time we, we did not know how it could be interpreted. BMW, again, by forgetting volumes. The library here. Well, there's volumes rest of each other, or they um, aggregate, like a jigsaw. But again, in Cincinnati, some of the interiors of the library. Wolf, Wolf has a story about this, but I don't. Okay. Going back to Rome, the idea of the striated fields and how they stem from one from the beginning. So the site in, in Rome was an industrial site, was built as a factory in 1904. I don't know where you're going. But... Network of... I know, but I, can you go back because I... <laughs> Network of affiliations. <laughs> It's not his fault, he's jumping, but it's, I know it's his jumping. Um, the, uh, the MW, let's go. Anyway, similarities to Rome. Scarborough Car Park. 
the field is slightly tilted, but it's had a distortion because the field is tilted and the, the car parking spaces are also at a geometrical kind of curve. And of course the shadow is like the drawings. The shadow is white as opposed to black. It's like painting white on black. The uh, com competition for the IIT in Chicago. Well, this idea of intersecting volumes also occurs in one space. Soft volumes versus uh, hard volumes. The gradation in is that museum in Qatar, with the superposition of a ramp, so it's almost like a field uh, with almost like motorways, but it becomes the way you move from one space to the other, uh, up and down these spaces. The field, as in Rome, we're looking at the side, which is uh, an L-shaped side, and we had many studies before where, you know, you operate parallel to the street, perpendicular to the street, and what we began to emerge is a diagonal, which is from the outside, uh, and that really disturbs this, this the earlier composition and making it all kind of really uh, confluent together. And how the flow occurs from the front, squeezed by the two existing buildings, so that we decided to keep one or two buildings to kind of almost squeeze that side, and then the flow, almost like a streams, would flood the side. So there are, the main galleries are all the major streams and the minor, minor spaces are the bridges, which are the minor streams. So it's like a kind of, almost like a river delta flooding the site. And this, as you see it from uh, above, uh, on site, the, the areas which are left open are supposedly the second phase of this project, which personally I don't think would ever happen, but, but uh, this is not the complete composition. That's another thing where, you know, in these cases, uh, the field provides you with the idea of an incomplete composition that you can actually build it in phases or in stages. So if you build three of the, of the phases without the fourth one, you can also you can have a complete composition. These are all the layers, and so we go back to the ideas of layering, which was done in the peak, where the layering of the drawings or the layering of the beams occur this is in a much more compressed way. So there are uh, layers of each other where in between you can all also have cascading or sloping galleries. Uh, all the other studies of the gradation of the color uh, of, the, of the striation. And the striation, how it translated into these, uh, not only um, the way you can find your way through the side or through the galleries, but also uh, as a way of hanging uh, drawings or a way of lighting the building. Now the geometry also of this, uh, this uh, composition always addresses an existing geometry on the side. So wherever you are around the surrounding of this building, you, can, you have a, one of these facades or spaces par parallel to you. Um, and this is, as you enter the space, under one of these minor streams, you also see the terracing of one of the galleries. So one of the galleries terraces down, this is a... Um, with a view outside, so you can terrace down and view out. Um, this, the entrance is obscured by a new skull, or a skeleton, not part of the design. Um, as you walk into the space, then as you go to the main space and you go through all this kind of really serious staircases which connects you through art, uh, through art and the university, where all the beams, all the, all the, all, all, all the um, um, uh, streams uh, mix and in between there is this one continuous space vertically which connects them all together. And uh, the, the kind of the louvers allows also uh, light. So it's a totally daily lit museum uh, and uh, natural light. And also that these could be also used as a way of breaking other objects. And the original competition, the museum was supposed to be a show for Arte Povera, which are very large pieces, which could have been hung from these from these rigs, brick from these 
from the ceiling, but eventually this would also be used as a way of hanging walls for paintings, as they've done with them now. There's a performance for the opening, so it could be also used not just for kind of reading, uh, hanging art or selling art, and can use performances. As in one view, you can see two sides of the building, or through the floor, or into the next building. So the idea that within within the space itself, you can see many layers, uh, vertically and also horizontally. <coughs> the terracing allows you to see also objects or exhibits from above, uh, like a terrain. So you see them uh, from the bottom. Could be appropriate, for example, for um, you know, artificial models or a very large object where you can hear not only on uh, in front but from high up. Uh, the, all the louvers, they kind of concrete, but still and concrete. Uh, the, what is nice about this project is that the the, the walls, which are continuous uh, from the structure, which is in concrete, and they're tied. Uh, from above, so you have a really a, almost, except for the outside, a column free uh, space. And it gives you a direction as you uh, occupy the whole site. Uh, maybe people who, this is uh, the top gallery where you can see all the way down to the transparent floor, and then you refer back to the city uh, and your adjacency is existing building, cantering out. And in a way, if you flip the diagram of the Rome project, you get this project, which is a project in Montpellier, where the, the, uh, the streams are on the edge. Uh, this is not completed yet, but there's also kind of marriage of maybe two, many ideas, one of, one of which is the idea of the aggregates, where you have not only uh, big uh, concrete pieces aggregating together, but it's three programs, uh, for the for the for the region in France, uh, it's a you know governmental building. It's the main uh, the archive, the library, and the sport offices, and with the, with the kind of uh, next to the salon. And um, so they are all uh, clustered together with the veins, the veins of the glazing is also follow the lines of these very large uh, objects. They appear again in a vertical way in the, uh, in the Dubai Towers or in Cairo. This idea of the vein or the kind of clusters or um, striation. Infrastructure, the station in Naples. So it goes from these kind of really relief studies, like the relief studies, so it's kind of a very gentle curve and just off the ground. So the station is actually in the bridge. Another bridge which is the uh, Zaragoza uh, entry to the expo two years ago, three years ago. Seal structure above, concrete structure below, and with a kind of very simple uh, just a kind of plan. So it operates as a bridge, well it's an occupied bridge, it's an active bridge for an exhibition. Um, I think it will be taken over by a bank to do exhibitions, I'm not sure what's, whether they have taken it over here or not. So it's, there's a section where on the, on the tall end there is another suspended from above suspended uh, floor. And this goes back to the, all these uh, other studies of bridges of, uh, you know, uh, bundles and modifications. And there's a bridge in Paris where you have, you know, different routes following different paths. The space of flying uh, in Taichung for the Guggenheim. So this idea of this kind of stretching out almost elasticated uh, kind of uh, spaces where you, you, you put it to kind of stretch out, it doesn't bridging or 
ramping or connecting between two volumes or part of the exhibit space or in Beijing. As an installation we did for uh, in Miami for Elastica, which was also the precursor of some of these uh, studies, uh, also milk, and, uh, and uh, but they're still there. What was the idea for the table for Bicha? Uh, also, also milk and crowned. Well, there are two ideas. One which is the idea of the, the elastica or, or, and the kind of like lily pads uh, on top. So it's a table of made of many tables. Uh, another similar project which was for a show at the uh, at House and Worth where this was the basis for the exhibiting uh, Henry Moore miniatures. Uh, on it, so that it's, it's a kind of a from the large scale to the very small scale, and the veins reappear in the opera house and the art space in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, at the Silent Island. The kitchen. At least to the idea of the, you know, um, the Chanel Pavilion. The, uh, um, uh, on one, well, it was on top of a car park in Hong Kong. Then it went to Japan and went to New York. So it's also the idea of fabrication. And uh, you know that these things are made not of flat material to be transported and shipped, but made of uh, both like fiberglass and uh, fabric. The cone within the cone in in uh, um, Wolfsburg. And the structure. Uh, I'm not showing you uh, Wolfsburg because I think it's been seen a lot, but. That was a very also interesting how to, to occupy structure. <coughs> so um, the ideas came from the bridge in Abu Dhabi. Uh, that the, the massive the structure was so massive that you could actually occupy this program. And in that case, the, all the structure is occupied by you know the entrances, the theaters, the restaurants, and so on. Uh, this project uh, you can see it coming up to Paris in about uh, in under a month, two or three weeks. Uh, it will be installed outside the Institut de Madara, uh, the development project uh, for the next five years. And we are having a show there uh, of research. So that's again the young skyline. Uh, the line very important from the idea of the shell, or the cocoon. The shells in Innsbruck, all made of glass like the icicle, also substructure in concrete, main structure in steel covered with glass, flowers is being here, and it's Patrick's car. <laughs> the other Patrick's car. He has a collection of cars. <laughs> There's a car in disguise as an object. And drawers. <coughs> uh, also different uh, theater studies for projects in, in Morocco. was also like a shell, but it's twisted to have an indoor and outdoor auditorium. Mm -hmm. uh, this product was, will be completed in about, well, it's almost done. It's the uh, Transport Museum in Glasgow. It's uh, on the 
on the end of two rivers. Which I always forget their names. Uh, I always give them Eve Klein, but it's Clyde and something. Um, but it's like a kind of melted shed. So it's two, like a, a, a third river, uh, because it's a, a metal river, but it's like a melted shed. Uh, or folded uh, roof. It's really kind of a simple diagram, but shows all the kind of uh, trains and cars and so on. Relating to the a very early project, which was the uh, scrum table, part of the same Ridge for Cathcart Road, many, many years ago. And these early paintings in for London. This is uh, another project which is also on site for uh, uh, MSU, which is Michigan State University. It's, an, it's a Eli Road uh, Museum, which is made up kind of these folded steels. So it's like the diagram of the Islamic Museum, but as a whole, as a complete volume. So this diagram kind of really, one study appears in very different ways, uh, many different times. Now, a study a prototype of the steel uh, exterior, stainless steel exterior folded, the interiors of the Wanjal rehearsal rooms, also folded ceiling and walls. Wanjal, the uh, interior of the auditorium. The exterior. Now, this idea of the crevice between two volumes are very tied together. Uh, these are two volumes which are going back to the early studies of, for example, the Caliph Opera House, the, one of some of the early idea of, uh, of uh, the landmass, so it's the idea of a public space as a landmass, um, with the, this was in, in the inverted necklace. Uh, where the idea that a perimeter is all the Assyrian facilities and suspended from it are these rehearsal spaces and the main auditorium. And when we designed the main auditorium, that was uh, a symmetry uh, so that the sound in the auditorium has a, uh, is energized. And the idea that all of this rests on a, a curve or what I call bubble, uh, bubble as a, as, a, uh, as a space of, uh, as a kind of topography. And public space. So, in the, all these uh, projects, there was always an intent to kind of really create a public or civic space. So, I'm not sure how it happened, but in the presentation, this was referred to as two pebbles on the Pearl River, uh, so kind of almost, almost simplification of the idea. And this idea of nesting, uh, especially in auditorias, had come earlier in Luxembourg where the idea of ne nesting or sitting, things sitting over each other or very adjacent to each other. These are the study for this, um, uh, and, the, and combined with the idea of topography, so it's almost, you almost kind of miss out on the, uh, on the main podium uh, of activity, like power park and so on. Very, very early studies of this idea of this nesting of two volumes together. So this was really, uh, I mean, I was really staggered in China when I was there, basically. Because the side when we won this competition, there was literally nothing. Um, none of these towers existed. And I actually never thought they would exist when op we opened this building, but it's extraordinary. <coughs> it's very, it's extremely crowded now. And one thing which is, which is not very obvious from this photograph is that this opera house sits in a park so, uh, uh, which stretches throughout almost a big part of the city, and um, and so it's an extension of the landscape, uh, and it's slightly higher than the ground. Uh, so these are 
from the outside of two spaces. As you can approach it by this uh, large staircase, all these towers have been built, if not doubled actually. And because the park is quite active, it's rather nice to see uh, people using the, not, maybe not the opera house at night, but uh, to use the park all day and throughout the day around the space. So again, it's, it's in granite, and there's one, one, one is white, one is black, but it's both kind of shades of gray and glass. Um, the space in between. So I'll just go through the space on the outside. I'm using a project building. Uh, on site, the mesh, the structural mesh. The knots. The steel knots which connects all the pieces together. Yeah, studies of all the uh, structure. Some of so some of the structure is cladded in uh, stone, and some of it is exposed with glass. And uh, going to the interiors. All the uh, staircases, the lighting, so these are kind of many studies of all the interior spaces. So what is uh, really, I think, uh, exciting about it is that it's uh, kind of, uh, although it is also a symmetry, but it's a one, con one, one surface, one continuous surface, uh, incorporating all the lighting, all the conditioning and, and acoustic uh, conditioning. These are studies of all many other interiors of many opera houses, kind of a family of opera, spaces or theater spaces or, or uh, conference halls. I give a lecture in the opera. The only thing with opera is that, you know, if you're not singing, I've given up singing. And if you're not singing, you can't see the audience. You know? And uh, it's, a, it's a very weird experience. Of course, they, they were, wanted to really honor me. They surround me with the lilies, and I have a serious allergy <laughs> to, to flowers like that. Anyway, it was a very interesting uh, being there. So you see kind of the balconies, uh, and this was all um, made of uh, like a gypsum, uh, like plasterboard, all kind of vacuum formed and uh, assembled. Going back to the idea of topography. I mean, grass, the bag, China. There's a kind of commercial project where this idea of kind of almost making a whole building out of uh, uh, layers of a landscape. Do it formations. Like the Dubai Opera House, which is on an island with, with the whole composition, the idea of the ensemble. So we go we're always also in between let's say the object and the and the and the ensemble and the ensemble. Earlier studies of the um, the Qatar Museum as a as a landscape. And then like a dune. It's very, it was uh, 97, so it's 14 years ago. So the kind of relation of space. 
but the only missing thing is that we don't we don't have people anymore doing this. Great models. Uh, the bridge in Abu Dhabi, the second, the third, the second or third crossing, has been going on for so long. They've been knitting the steel work for the past 15 years. Uh, but it is it is a dune, like a, so it's kind of. And it was interesting. One of the uh, somebody sent me a text message the other day saying he's been going up and back and forth on this bridge for the whole afternoon uh, in a car. That is true. It is calligraphy as landscape, as a, as a kind of structure. So there are two buttresses, and they go up and down till they meet at the end, and they become flat as a motorway. And the substructure, the substructure is in uh, is incorporated in, in the main structure is steel. Again, above the datum of the of the actual uh, uh, road, it's like an arch. But, but these buttresses are so enormous that you, they could be occupied, but it, they can't because of obviously security and so on, accessibility. Uh, and that's the idea of occupying structure came came from there. Back to the upper house. Very early project which we did uh, maybe 20 years ago uh, for a stadium in Abu Dhabi also, the idea of kind of really uh, fluid space. This actually came from a study which I did met in 25 years ago for a triennale in Milan, which I don't have a slide up here. Uh, this idea of the kind of uh, free form uh, space. And then how it took maybe a few years to try it in the idea of a project in Cologne for the idea of land formation, which was, I think, a very critical study. Uh, how could land formation or uh, topography uh, replace very large, or not replace, but deal with very large scale buildings? And this was a very large site. And there was a whole period of uh, looking into, into how to renovate or do with our existing harbor developments. Uh, our favorite project was in Dusseldorf, which, um, which is a sad story, but I won't go into it right now. Um, and, um, <coughs> and this was, uh, you know, so the idea of uh, topography as a large program. Uh, next, this is the, uh, the project in Seoul, where the idea of the park and the building are almost um, totally connected as of one, one piece. And camouflage. We've played for a long time with this idea, and now we see it, now you don't. This would be a surprise project because you don't know whether it's going to look fabulous or not fabulous. <laughs> I study for a kind of some Olympic park. Again, the idea of the kind of the idea of the mass as a land mass. Uh, the aquatic pool in London, which unfortunately now has two wings attached to it, uh, to fly. Preparing it not to fly, but uh, they think it's going to fly off. Well, this was originally a slightly different diagram, uh, where the, there were three pools, where there was a dip. So the idea of the wave is obviously very obvious for a pool. And the idea of the wave allowing the high end to be where the diving boards are, and the low end for the exercise, and the other one was for the swimming. And um, they had to kind of really do uh, some sort of shrinkage problem. Uh, and I think that it became much more very compact, much more compact, because at the, t the, the time of the study is that it was more important to deal with legacy mode, which is post-Olympic, not to leave a very large structure unused. And the one is to be used by the area, uh, it's London regeneration, in East London. And the, the Lee Valley was uh, basically a swamp and uh, gas works, and there was nothing there. And, and, and I think now the proximity of the city is extraordinary. And um, it would be, I think, interesting if they don't rent up with projects in the roof. 
the structure, steel structure of the roof, uh, supported by basically two very large, two buttresses and one more, uh, and one hand, so there's a three over the, the, the whole pool. Uh, apparently, I did not know this, uh, someone told me that they've done a, some sort of a comedy, uh, you know, TV comedy about, you know, the whole Olympics. And, um, and they, wanted, they were talking about the pool and they were, in this comedy, um, they say, you know, they wanted to change something in the pool. And I said, do you want to call her? And I guess I know you call her. And anyway, but someone else had seen this program and called me up and I said, oh, this program was on TV and they were going to call you. What was going on? And they, they did not realize actually it was an, a film. It was a, a, a kind of a, a spoof. Anyway, but this one now has these two wings for the seating. So the idea that after the Olympic, the Olympic, uh, you know, uh, the Olympic committee will dispense of all the, of all the, um, uh, the seating of the temporary structure. So the idea of the aqua table comes from the aquatic pool. Again, milled and uh, and fiberglass and, and first and foam and with a with a silicone top. Like it has dips with the with the legs are and the silicone tops looks like uh, water. Back off. The um, you, well, it's been on site for a few years. Uh, and the idea of a, a, a program combining three programs, so it's a, a performance space, a library, and a museum in one, in one space. And then it, it's like, almost like an acropolis where it sits on a high uh, raised ground, which is a park, and then, you know, it will meet, it will flow into the landscape. It is a bit like a roller coaster, uh, the steel structure. The president wanted it in blue. There's no other reason for it to be in blue. So it's kind of a, blue a blue roller coaster. And these are the samples of uh, some of the cladding and fabric of course, concrete and, and, and maybe concrete panning on the floor. So that uh, we have spent the last year trying to decide, uh, the guy who's designing this, trying to decide which color should match the ground. Now, this guy is a great guy in Safed, Turkish. Um, uh, he's my carer in the summer, and I understand him. Um, he has a very deep voice, so deeper than mine. And, um, and everybody who makes him in the office hates him. Because first he started with Patrick. Patrick, and he go out and check the colors. Do you want the beige, the gray, or the light gray? So Patrick, bless him, can't see color, comes back and says, beige. And then, obviously, Suffolk doesn't want beige. So the next day, someone else comes into the room. And he asks the same question and takes them out into the courtyard and shows them the samples. This went on for months. He never asked me. <laughs> you know, he waited to the very end uh, to, to dare say which one is white or black or whatever. Anyway, I don't know which one it is now. But, and, but he did ask me how do, do they, should they match? Yeah, of course. Uh, where should the line be? I said, well, you know, should imagine it like a you know, make it, you know, it's very difficult to kind of draw one line which, you know, meets all the uh, rules of geometry. So I think it's, it's, it was very, anyway, he asked, at least he asks. Some people make major boobies without asking. Anyway. And then we come to the end. Showing all the interiors. Some of the kind of, um, it's not the cladding, it's the. Uh, uh, 
This is the uh, interior of the theater. It's laminated wood, uh, also done in Turkey. You can see in the samples of this uh, pieces where they peel off. So there's uh, also seamless interior. Studies of the, of the wood. So, another car which is like uh, the, the, the theater in uh, Jordan. So this combination of, you know, strata, striation, carving, uh, performance space, all together kind of cocooned uh, inside one continuous uh, volume. All the carving spaces uh, and this one. Jump off. <laughs> I think he might be throwing other people out there. It's on site as well. And of course, you know, he doesn't realize, like, you know, he's a, became a sort of a threat. So punishment is very fit. So he doesn't mind running between his living room on the ground and five stories up his bedroom. <laughs> but actually what happened, he bought the site and he thought, it's such a great site, it's a forest. But the trees are very high, and you know, if you're sitting on the ground, you'll see the tree trunks. And so we thought it'd be kind of uh, Elisitsky, uh, put him on a on a on a platform above, so he would see the trees from above uh, next to us. Yeah. The entire of the ground is a spa. It's really beautifully done, actually. It's also uh, all, all the edges <coughs> are in metal. These are studies of the interiors. We have to do the interior stuff. So he's looking out into the trees, looking from below up to the room. They had to have a test on this from security just in case he's a sniped at Putin, his neighboring side. <laughs> I have the Russians in this room. <laughs> and this is a study for these towers, which are also uh, kind of <coughs> combining all these ideas of the, of the void uh, of stretching out. There's the Marseille Tower, uh, studied all the different towers in the office. You know, a space in the volume of the car is now in the middle of these uh, large volumes. <coughs> We're not stopping on it. <coughs> this is a competition coming up. It's on site. It serves for a university uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia, a study center, rather her, uh, done by Aramco uh, for uh, energy research. And the idea originally was that you start with one cell, and and uh, but they tumble on the side, so they kind of cluster together and they fragment as they move towards the side. Patrick was supposed to show that we are, the studio is doing this book, and I was asked to show it. I'm doing propaganda again. <laughs> Patrick Love forgot it. He can't blame me, Hamis. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much.
think we have time for one or two questions. sketch or something, but since nobody understands sketches, I, I don't show them a sketch. Uh, you know, you know, I sketched a kitchen, they gave me a bathtub, uh, or vice versa, so there's no point in doing a sketch. Um, uh, so, you know, I might be fluffing about. I think it, it's no longer the same. I think it, the process has changed in the sense that now I think that, you know, sometimes you have an idea, sometimes there's a study of, you know, different things and comes together because people, you know, talk about it or you know, show it to me and goes back and forth. While well, before there were many studies done at the same time, some were models, some are drawing, some are sketches, some are paintings, and that how one, but I think what, what you have to understand is 30 years of work, you own from your own repertoire, so you don't have to go through everything all over again. I mean, as much as I would like to be able to invent the wheel every day, but you know you have to also improve and uh, perfect your repertoire, and, and I think you learn from your own self. So I think that, um, but the, the process is definitely different uh, because you know, um, in the same way that you made a mistake by the hand, you can have mis misunderstanding or um, something uh, misinterpreted or interpreted differently through computer drawing, and I think that's, that's what is very exciting about, about doing. And also the teams are very, I mean, I've always believed in teamwork. Uh, since, I mean, I, I started working on my own without being in an office very early when I finished school or a year, two years later. So I really believe in teamwork, and I think that teams were with me, were not just like doing what I wanted them to do. And, um, and I believe in teamwork in the students, Work. I've always done teamwork on this. Even in the A day 25 years ago, I used to have teams, and there was, there was an argument in who in this team is better than the other, and so on. Um, well, work starts with this argument as well here. Your friend Peter Cookie used to do that. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter because if somebody's weak of the three or four, you know, they, they learn faster through the process. And, and I think there was, a, there was a tremendous, I think, Importers in that teamwork because of camaraderie. Uh, I think the, on the other hand, of course, the teams in London are very competitive with each other. Um, and I don't think it's to the point of uh, unhealthiness, but I think it's sometimes good. But I think the process has changed. And there isn't this idea that, you know, every time you want to have an idea, people used to think, I used to have a very small news house, which had, I mean, the whole house would have fitted from here to that where you're standing. So every time I wanted to have some quiet, I would go to the bathroom <laughs> and sit there. And people thought something in the bathroom inspired me. <laughs> I mean, hello, you know. Like, they used to always send me to have a bath. You have a bath. And, but there isn't this idea that, you know, I'm, you know, Muhammad or somebody who has gone to the mountain and had inspiration. Um, I think that. There are, of course, in your life, you visit places, you come across people, you see something which, which triggers something, you know? But it's, it's, it's neither talent nor anything is enough. You have to really always work on it. And I've known people who are very talented, I ended up with, with no talent. And people who are not so great and they with amazing talent because they really were, it's not about pushing yourself, it's about, you know, really how, as long as you are conscious that you help to push the work. And I think that's really critical. And, and um, Marsha is here and who was um, also in London 20, 24 years ago and there are people in the office here and we spent many, many times many nights up all night, um, you know, uh, people used to come in the morning to pick up the competition, they were sent, there were people kind of scattered around the room, under the table, over the table, 
from lack of sleep, but, but, um, but I think it, that's what it really takes uh, in this profession, uh, maybe not in others. I'm sure the same in medicine or music, but uh, in other professions, but it takes a lot of, a lot of um, diligence. So and I think it relies on these teams. And I think that was a good lesson for us because you know, when you make these big projects, uh, the teams are very enormous. I mean, there's so many, you know, consultants, engineers, lighting, air conditioning, um, you know, you, you name it, you know, acoustics, material, lighting, everything. And you have to be able to, you know, delegate and, and, and uh, really explain to these people what the intent. I, I worked with an engineer in London many, many years ago called Peter Rice. And I often mention him, and he was a brilliant man, and, and he, he taught us a lot. He taught us that it's important, it doesn't matter what you do, but you have to understand strategy. And you have to be very strategic about the decisions you make, you make a project. And um, that was a very good lesson. And he was incredibly modest and generous. And these are lessons one has to always learn from these people, because their greatness is not because they're just brilliant engineers or architects, but because they're actually great people. And uh, I don't want to sound kind of uh, corny, but it really is. And that, that generosity in terms of teaching was, is very important. Well, I think that, you know, um, I didn't show that in the, um, in the sum of the furniture, the idea that everything is contained within a particular volume and, and it's cut off. Uh, we did this furniture which was very fluid, but when they were like placed in a box, as if in a box, they were chopped off. Um, and that was very deliberate because the section, um, if you kind of try to make it uh, floppy at the, at the ends, I don't think it works. It had to kind of really had to a beginning and an end, and that's why it is uh, cut off. That's it? Oh, more. Sorry. Whichever. I don't think that uh, you have to always have a kind of a, a overloaded theory about everything. I mean, it's obviously, the theoretical project was from the beginning was about to pursue new ideas in modernity and how really uh, to create a speciality in, in different ways and what, what your idea is about the public domain, about, you know, how this is. So I don't, I can't repeat it every time I give a lecture. Uh, maybe I should, but... It's not, it's no longer about this theory. I can start the lecture again. <laughs> and do a marathon tomorrow morning. A different uh, verbiage. Um, I would like to know if there's something you could recommend um, as a female architect to young women who want to become, I don't know, successful, or is there one key? Yeah, this work hard. <laughs> there, there is really no other trick. I think that, and to have a total commitment, I don't mean to say that women don't have a commitment to architecture, but I think it's very important that there is continuity and there is support for women in, uh, in the workplace. Uh, I know it's very difficult, even in my office, and I know it's very difficult for women to be heard uh, because even uh, in my office, they, the men don't want to listen. Um, <laughs> so so um, uh, that's one problem, but, but I know it's very difficult um, the way they're treated. Um, but I think the important thing is uh, continuity. They have to really be either by themselves or their families or whatever, give them support to continue. Because in many cases, when 
when there is family and children, there is a disruption. And I think that they need tremendous encouragement. And um, there is kind of this idea that women can only do a domestic project. And, and, they, and that's really ridiculous. They do the same thing in my office. You know, a house, find a girl to do it. It's just the most, you know, it really is like, you know, a man is not a man if he does a house. I mean, it's, the most, it's absurd. But I think it needs support, you know, and uh, this comes in from from very young age, you know, whether it's your parents, the parents, or the, the school, or your teachers, the, but I think now, I think that women are emancipated enough, they, they have to, without being over pushy, uh, find a place for themselves, and I think there was incredible opportunities. Um, and uh, they have to believe their own talent, you know, and not, you know, allow others to only need without them.